It's the next level. Did you find anything? They got them in a cabin up in Rochester. I mean, back. She's great. We we talked earlier, and um, she's she's really great. She's you're really you're great. All right, easy, Tiger. How'd you get on? I guess you are fuck all. No witnesses, but we definitely found fuck all. I'm not sure I'm using that term properly, but uh... fuck me. This is a jackpot. Well done, you two. This will do nicely. All right, listen up, you lot. Getting the kid back ain't your fight, and I ain't gonna ask you to come along. Lick my big black balls, butcher. Sorry, Becca. You done asked us to lie, spy, do all kinds of fucked up shit for you. Now we finally get a chance to do something good, and you think we gonna take a pass on that? We're in. Of course we're in. All right. Hey panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this week we are covering The Boys Season 2, Episode 8, What I Know. Oh, wow. It's been a it's it's not been a long road, but it's been uh, it's been a very interesting road getting here. But uh, let's remind everyone before we get too far, this is a, a spoiler full uh podcast for the second season of Amazon Prime's The Boys. Yep. So if, if you haven't watched it all the way through, I don't know why you would be listening to us. Maybe you just like the sound of our voices. I don't know. It, that's cool <laughs> if you do. But you know, hey, watch the watch the episode and then come back and, and listen to us discuss it. Yeah. Exactly. Cause by then we'll probably be moved on to other things, but you could easily just send some sort of feedback later on regarding the episodes that you liked or Absolutely. what you didn't like. So with that we should move on. So, The Boys Season 2, Episode 8, What I Know. Well, the synopsis of this episode, Becca shows up on Butcher's doorstep and begs for his help. The boys agree to back Butcher, and together with Starlight, they finally face off against Homelander and Stormfront, but things go very bad very fast. Yes, they do. So they battle Stormfront. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm never going to uh, give that up. I'm going to use that uh, next season. Stormlander, <laughs> Stormlander, you mean. You said Stormfront. You said it correctly. Oh, I said it. Oh, <laughs> damn. Darn it, man. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> no, no, it's been a lot of fun. And, you know, one of the things that I, I was thinking about as I was rewatching this episode the other day was just all the different arcs that we've had yeah. in this season that really the first season, because it was really just setting everybody's character up. And everything, and we did get a little story arcs, a little character arcs in season one, but really this season, I have to say, I, I like it better than season one. And yeah. uh, just just because we we did get a deeper look into all of these characters, even our bad guys, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. They are, in the very beginning of the first season, we actually start to experience these people for the first time, get to know who they are what their quirks are, the personality. And now we're starting to see a little bit more, even with Maeve throughout this. So this was a lot of big arc for Maeve, mm -hmm. even though we didn't really see too much of her, but we saw a lot that was that mattered most to me within her personality and what her relationship was with the boy, not the boys, the seven, as mm -hmm. well as Elena. Right. And, and everything that goes on involved with that, as well as with Vought. And then on top of that, you know, we see a little bit of a different side of Huey, as mm -hmm. well as Annie, uh, Starlight, as it were, and Butcher himself. We get to see some things that we didn't know about Butcher that we did not know in season one. So, yeah. And then obviously we get to see Deep, you know, get picked on a lot more. So <laughs> <laughs> he's just such a sad sack, that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's the uh, he's the Linus Van Pelt of the he's the Eeyore of this uh, this show. So. Yeah, exactly. So with that, we should move into our top fives. Absolutely. Fuck Fresca. You want me to start? Sure. 
Okay, the return of Jim Beaver as Secretary of, of Defense, uh, Bob Singer. I, I just, I love the actor Jim Beaver. I love that Eric Kripke reuses these actors in his shows. I love, even the name is is recycled because it's the same name as his character from Supernatural, which is which is a, uh, a home, uh, not a homage, it's a... Uh, it's also a name of a producer from Supernatural, Robert Singer, as as well. So it's huh. it's one of those meta kind of things that Eric Kripke did with this character. And now you could almost kind of wonder if if like the boys is like a, a you know a parallel universe where Bobby Singer went a different way than he did in the supernatural universe. It's kind of cool, I think. Yeah. And it was very crucial with him, too, within the episode, too, mm -hmm. in the very beginning, because of what they were talking about. And we'll get into that in my other notes, and I'll probably segue into something that you put in in your top five. But I'm going to move on to my number one, which would be the opening scene, mm -hmm. which was the how to survive a supervillain attack at school video. <laughs> so uh, the fact that Homelander is doing this, and he himself, if you think of it, is a supervillain yeah. or a dangerous as you know as a supervillain being a hero so the rules of law law lock all doors and windows Two, arm yourselves apparently teachers are allowed to have firearms in the classroom <laughs> <laughs> as well as the kids arming themselves with what they can. So we see the kids pick up a flagpole with a spear yeah. head on it. And then yeah. that one kid with the hole puncher. Yeah. <laughs> hilarious. Hilarious. And the last one, which would be W, which is wait, number three, for wait for a superhero to come. Yeah. Yeah. It was just basically your typical PSA for schools. But it, it just like, I'm like, are you kidding me? That it, it like with him doing that is like so hypocritical. And we all know this as viewers. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. Uh, so my number, my number four, our next one is, is just Maeve. We already kind of started talking about her a little bit, you know, the very beginning of the episode, she says that she won't go and testify after all the, the bloodiness of the last episode but mm -hmm. i love that she comes back there at the end she jumps in to defeat uh, storm you almost had me i almost did it. i almost <laughs> said stormlander uh, she jumps in there to defeat the stormfront because i mean without her i don't think they would have been able to get get stormfront down and disorient her enough you know to uh to actually get to the point where stormfront then flew away but uh you know i'm sure we're going to talk some more about it but just this whole idea of of we see her kind of super critical pessimistic kind of attitude mm. toward oh nothing's we're not going to be able to fix anything it's it's all just going to be you know crap and she was but, a, in, in a pity party you know yeah it was a, yeah she was having a pity party for herself i think because of lena yeah. and everything else that's going on you know yeah, and then she shows up there at the end, and she and she threatens Homelander. I, I love this about her that she figured this out. Obviously, she probably know because she knows Homelander so well. She knows that his one weakness is he wants people to love him. I mean, he's a he's a narcissist who wants people yes. to adore him. And in fact, when she shows him that video and threatens to release it, you know, even in his mind, he can hear the cheering crowds you know homelander homelander and all that and, and <laughs> if he hadn't already snapped we're gonna see that he snaps completely by the end of the episode oh definitely we see that a hundred times at the very end mm -hmm. and what he says what was it to billy and to mave at that point when she threatens him so yeah yeah and you could see it's like in his mind he lost at the very end, obviously, spoilers if you have not watched it. Come on, it's been months. But the fact that, you know, he lost Stormfront, but also the fact that he also lost Becca, and mm -hmm. he's going to lose Ryan at the same time. So yeah. he, he was grasping at straw, saying that he could just destroy yeah. the world. Right. The only yeah. thing left for him is the adoring crowds, because everybody else who loved him is taken away from. Exactly. So, yeah, it's it, you could see how crazy he is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I do agree with that. My number four, well, that would be the meeting with the head of Vought. I think it's Mr. Regis? No, no, Edgar. Or, Stan, that's Stan Edgar. Edgar. Oh, yeah. Edgar. Edgar. Yeah. Okay, I keep yeah. getting the names wrong. Same thing with the church leader, too. Mm -hmm. But they have Madonna. that yeah. yeah, Yeah, they have that meeting, and the, the church apparently wants both the Deep and A-Train to be put back in the Seven. But, you know, Edgar, you know, 
<laughs> states that Stormfront doesn't want a train in because she doesn't like him. So, yeah. and apparently the deep is not a good cell to come back in, in some way, you know, but th they make the accommodation due to a train being out or whatever, you know, out of whatever yeah, issues I, that they had, you know, I had a bit of this in my, in my notes as well, because I found it really interesting that Stan Edgar, he recognizes what Stormfront is and that's mm -hmm. what, because Adana knows that she was a Nazi. He has that that evidence. And yes. Stan Edgar apparently knows this as well. And mm -hmm. But he's able to look past that hatred or dislike he has or for Or those her, indiscretions. Or those, that, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, that they have. Because she's still making him money. She's still – and so – It's and a so business. Really, and, well, it is. And it's a blessing really for him at yeah. the end when – her when the evidence is, comes out that she's a Nazi because now he can get rid of her and bring a train back so it really ends up you know that whole thing of a train getting that evidence is a huge deal that it doesn't just help him yeah. but really it helps Stan Edgar out as well because they can get rid of Stormfront at that point. exactly and, and the fact the way he does it and we'll talk about that a little bit more later <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. My next one is that we finally get the scene. We talked about it in the last episode with Ryan kind of freaking out there at the Planet Vought restaurant. You know, he gets mm. he gets over overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And then you know, I found it interesting. It didn't it didn't click in my head until this last time watching it that Homelander basically we see that Homelander cares more for Ryan than he does for Stormfront because yes. he takes Ryan out and he leaves. And Stormfront's just like uh, just left all alone in there, looking around, going, "What? What's going on?" And then she has you to know? go find him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I thought that was that was really interesting. It was really telling again of that we're starting to see who he cares about and what he cares about more. So exactly, and that would be my number three too. But also, there's that conversation in the cabin when Stormfront actually pushes Homelander to go talk to his own son. And he doesn't know how to be a father because he himself, deep down, is pretty much like a child. Mm -hmm. But he discloses this information about him. He had the same issues like, like Ryan did when he had his abilities. But mm -hmm. obviously they were promoting him. And they said, yeah, they found me like six miles down I-95. Right, just crying his eyes I out. I-90 yeah. or something. And he was crying. My, and he was like – Ryan was like, I, you cry? He goes, I haven't for a long time, but yeah, I do cry. So it was him exposing himself and showing Ryan yeah. that he is a person just like Ryan. And he explains to him, like, you know, that, and he, he kind of stops himself. He says, the doctors. And he goes, oh, the, the people that raised me. Right. And right. he goes on and on about that and the fact that he wants to be there for Ryan. So the, it shows some sort of – he was very genuine in his feelings and his thoughts towards Ryan and what he wanted to do and to help mm -hmm. him because I think he sees himself in that kid but also is afraid of that kid at the same point because we see that at the very end of what he did. Yeah. But, you know, it it, it was very touching and it was a good scene overall, you know, to see Ryan do that. He was doing – I forget what he was reciting. Was it presidents? No, the states. The states, okay. He did the states. He says he does them in alphabetical order and geographical order. Yes. Which I don't know what he meant by geographical order. Because top to bottom, right to left, maybe, or bottom to top, right to I don't know. That would be an interesting yeah. way that he but yeah, it was it was the, the names of the states. Okay. I knew it was something I forgot, mm -hmm. but I didn't write it down. But yeah. The thing was is that the fact that, you know, Ryan was put into these things and Homelander doesn't want the same, you know, treatment that he got as a kid for his own kid. Now, mind mm -hmm. you, in the very beginning, it was all about getting back at Becca and to take what is his, which is his child. But I think deep down, after a while, he, he grew an attachment to this kid, and he knows this is his son. And, yeah, he is a bit afraid of him. I'm sure he is. But, you know, he, he, it showed how human he can be with his feelings, even though he's a, a loon. He's, he's right. a Looney Tunes, you know? Well, it's still, like I said, it's this whole, and I, I hope I'm using the term correctly, it's, the whole narcissistic personality is is that having control, yeah. and, and then this is his, the extension of that control is mm -hmm. having his son. So, exactly. so yeah, so absolutely, he's going to, he's going to care for Ryan to the extent of the fact that Ryan is his son, 
you know um but he's yeah. also opening himself up too at the same time i think a, a little bit I, I i can give you that yeah 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 but that leads right into my to my next one which is that whole scene in the cabin when homelander comes back and he, he finds the uh he finds the telephone he finds butchers the telephone that stan Hager had given butcher mm-hmm. to use to call him for the troops to come to get ryan and he realizes and it's it's interesting because i i guess he must have put the plan together because he hears the soldiers say something about getting the boy or he hears stan edgar on the phone that's what it is he hears stan edgar on the phone say something about make sure you get the boy and so he realizes that vaught was going to take ryan away from him yes. as well and that makes him snap and then he just kills all those guys in the cabin and you know he comes out and he's all covered in blood and then he when he finds ryan and billy and becca there in the in the clearing he he's all covered in blood and he's trying to get ryan to come to him and Mm -hmm. ryan has just killed becca you know or or killed storm or shot stormfront and in the process accidentally killing becca Mm -hmm. and which is just it's just heartbreaking but I, i love that whole as we tie all that together and as Becca is dying, that she tells Billy to make sure Ryan doesn't blame himself, right? Make sure that he knows it's not his fault that this happened. Yeah. That, that was, yeah, that that's part of my number one and Mm. we'll go into that then. But yeah, that, that was, that was a hard scene. That whole, the last 15, 20 minutes of the show was really hard. Yeah. Yeah. To watch, you know, but yeah. We'll, we'll get into that one as soon as we get to my number one. My number sure. two at this point is A-Train just popping in on Annie and Huey and <laughs> handing over a file to them <laughs> with all of Stormfront's information from Vought. You know, who she is, what she has done. It's A-Train's way of getting back into the Seven. Well, yeah, because he knew from what Stan Edgar you know, had said there with Adana, he knew the only way he's going to get back into Seven is to get Stormfront out of the Seven. Yes, and he even yeah, A-Train even states, he goes, yeah, fuck that Nazi bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought it was funny how he just popped in on them as they were driving. And yeah. Then, and, and as he's talking, he see, he's like standing there talking to Annie and Huey. Annie just points out and states the stress that, that it would have done to his heart. And Huey pointed out how he saved his life because A-Train is using compound V. So that well, would put a lot of stress on his body to give him another cardiac arrest. Right. I think, I think what the point of that whole scene was, is I think we're supposed to, I think we're supposed mm-hmm. to understand that he stopped, he stopped doing that, that he yes. stopped using the compound V because he says, I'm fine now. I'm not doing that anymore. So he wasn't worried about having a heart attack by by using his his speed. So I think that's what we're meant to take from that scene. Yeah, but he's still using a speed which could actually accelerate his heart to the but, point where it can hurt it because Right, that's what I'm saying. I don't think so. I don't I I think we're I think we're meant to understand that since he stopped taking the extra Yeah, I know even though he stopped, I'm it's saying. not going to No, but that's what I'm saying is you know we're saying to, wait, are you saying that he's risking a heart attack or he's because I'm saying I don't think he is at all. I, I think, think he's he, good to go. I think he can use his speed all he wants as long as he doesn't Use the compound the, the v. compound V. That's what I think we're meant to take from that. I think so too, but I'm also thinking also because he's just using his abilities as they are without the V. Right, exactly. They, without they, the extra V. Right. Yeah, yeah. That that it's even because he's already suffered a heart attack, he still mm-hmm. is at risk at some response. Yeah, okay. Respect, I mean, I guess know? yeah, health health wise he might yeah, be, but yeah, you know, like they, they point out the fact that they need a speedster. So he's he's the speedster again. So mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I think, but yeah, I had I had this in my notes because it had me tearing up. All this these scenes in the car between Huey and Starlight, where yeah. we really realize that Huey has become Starlight's canary mm-hmm. as well, because he's pulling her back to that hopeful side where she was starting to get dark. Man, she was starting to to lose that that perspective, and she started to to get into that pity, like what uh, uh, Maeve had. You yes. know, and Huey really is the one who pulled, kind of pulled her out of that because she says, and I, I just love the scene so much. It just, it really did. And it was funny because I go, I, I go to tearing up to laughing because he pops, <laughs> the way he pops into the car, you know, but it's just, it's so good when she asks him why he went back to Vaught and why he's so hopeful. Mm. And he, cause he says, I don't know why. And she's like, that's why I'm still with you because he, wow. he, He's so hopeful that he doesn't even realize uh, what he's the effect he's having on other people. So yeah, 
Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was the whole thing was great. It was a wonderful, wonderful scene. Well, to add to that scene, too, is like the reason why Huey loves Billy Joel. I'll mm-hmm. come from my notes with that. So he right. loves it so much. It was due to his mother and his mom left when he was six. And it's a memory of his mother that he holds on to. So we finally get that the reasoning for the Billy Joel music with it. Yeah, they used the to show. do their Billy Joel dance parties. And I love because that's another one of those things that 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 moment in his life could have turned him hard and and mean Mm -hmm. you know knowing that my mom just left me but instead he was looking towards the hopeful side of it well yeah she left she didn't die though she's you know she's just gone and and, and, and he actually thought she was dead because he never spoke of her and i i love that that he took he took that that moment in his life that could have sent him down a dark path and he said i don't ever want to be like that and and what's cool is i have a, a there's a good friend of mine who is 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 very similar to he was a he he was adopted uh because basically his his birth family didn't want him oh. and and he has taken that though and has has swapped it to be like i don't ever want to be the person who leaves i don't ever want to be the person who who doesn't want to be there yeah that walks the away that I love that walks yeah. away so i love that i love that 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 huey shows us that side of him and that that amount of uh yeah, just just how it's really really cool. Well, isn't that to see a little that bit tenderness different because he walks away from the boys, but to help out. <laughs> but he's st- at the well, very end, and and I don't know because th- this is kind of a spoiler. So if you don't want to hear this, skip ahead uh, about thirty seconds. Two, one. There's a storyline in the comic books mm-hmm. where he basically goes undercover. With, ah, this, with this office I just of got volume one so affairs. you get <laughs> so, so TV Podcast Industries mentioned that okay. and so I'm wondering if that's the direction they're going with this mm-hmm. I don't know though I, I don't know though because we did we, you know we okay back from the spoiler because um, we don't know <laughs> what Billy's response is Billy remember at the end Mallory wants him to run the team with funding and he just walks away and puts his sunglasses on he doesn't say no he doesn't say yes yeah, he just walks away, and I, I think, you know, I think the show had to do that though because at the, I'm sure when they were filming, they didn't know they were going to get they picked have up a for season, season three. three, yeah, right. So they didn't want to leave that hanging out there, unless so. I so it's going to be interesting to see when we get to season three how what's what's going on there. So so yeah, and to let all you listeners know too, there actually is a new boys comic that's out there. I saw it recently on the on the shelves when I went to my comic shop. Oh, cool. So they're at issue four and it, it I don't remember the title, but it's out there. But the you have the omnibuses or the volumes mm-hmm. that are out there. I got volume one recently on trade. I picked that at Cave Comics and uh yeah, as well as Snowpiercer up at uh Mega Brain too. So when Snowpiercer comes back I'll be ready. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, okay, so that leads us to my to my number one, which is probably Correct. very I don't know what your number it's probably very similar. Very similar. It's just that whole fight there at the end. Yeah. With with Stormfront where she she shows up there. And I, I'm still a, a little unclear about how they drew her there, but it, it I because she just kind of shows up there in that in that field. Yeah, she's um, uh, like, I'm trying nobody to has a tracer or something. Yeah, not like I'm Homelander's there because she knows how to find Homelander. Yeah, I'm not sure how that whole thing I have to I have to go back. I didn't pay but I don't understand why does Frenchie make a point of yelling, Oh, get to the car, because that's where the weapon is that's gonna that we can <laughs> use to defeat her. Because automatically she hears that and she destroys the car. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it just, I didn't, I didn't notice it the first time around, but this most recent watch, I was like, what is he doing? Yeah, like, I know. It, it was, it was just very, was but then very again, this is Frenchy and he's very strange. Remember the last few times we talked about his <laughs> antics and what he yeah. does. Yeah. I he's guess. got a purpose in what he does. I guess it just didn't, it didn't make any sense. And wasn't Kimiko in the car too? No, no, no. They were all out of the car. Oh, that okay. was, I, I, like I said, I, I don't remember exactly when she shows up there, why she showed up there, but they, they drew her, they somehow, they drew her there yeah, to try to defeat her, but they left the thing in the car. It, it just, it just was confusing to me why he would shout that because, uh, you know, but then, and I remember the very first time I watched this way back, as soon as Stormfront breaks Kimiko's neck, mm-hmm. I'm like, but she can heal. 
Like we've seen her. Yeah, all... but she doesn't know that. That's the whole right. Thing. I don't think Stormfront knows that. I don't even think the boys. I don't think anybody else even knows that at this. Only point. we do as viewers. You know? <laughs> right, right. So I, I thought that was really cool when she snaps her neck kind of back into place, and then we see yeah. when after Maeve shows up, we see the three girls there, and and what is Frenchie does the uh, does the I guess girls do get it done. <laughs> you know, because him and Mother's Milk and Huey are just standing there watching while they're kicking the crap out of Stormfront. Yeah, and then got... Stormfront finally gets in and flies away. And, you know, she flies, I guess, the only thing I can assume is that she and Storm, uh, Stormlander, you got, I did it. Uh, <laughs> she and Homelander both have the same kind of like maybe super hearing. And so they were able to locate Ryan and Becca. Yeah. And Billy, um, because, you know, Stormfront shows up first and then mm-hmm. starts attacking. Billy tries to to fight her off. She grabs Becca, got her by the tree. And then Homelander shows up after Ryan has his reaction to uh, his mother being strangled. So, yeah. yeah. All right. But it was just that whole that whole end sequence. And I've got more about the the wrap up montage in my notes. Yeah, well, that that would be my whole ending. I think my my number one, mm-hmm. which would be that ending in the woods. You know, the tragic ending with Ryan trying to stop Stormfront from killing Becca. Mm-hmm. Becca stabs Stormfront in the eye. Come on, that was nasty. That that was crazy. That. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but that the in the end by using his powers, he kills Becca at the same time. There's a uh, life threatening cut to the throat i guess yeah i'm still not entirely clear exactly what happened but you can you can see that stormlanders uh, stormlanders i did it again <laughs> stormfront stormfront hands were around her st- throat yeah is still clutched around and it could throat. have been that the force so, of her her hands while he was shooting yeah. at stormfront when he burned her arms that. and legs, her arms and legs off, or burned her whole body, or it could have Correct. been, you know, burns to her. I, I, I'm not 100 percent sure exactly, um, but we we definitely know that that's something Ryan's going to have to deal with. Yeah, is just that that under if we see him again, I'm not sure. And uh, yeah, and we get that Anakin Skywalker Stormfront <laughs> ending with the yeah. you know no four limbs. Yeah, Becca's final words to Butcher to make sure that Ryan knows. That it's not his fault, and that Butcher knows that Ryan is good. Yeah. That, that was very touching. It, it's all that Billy has left of Becker, but there's this one moment when Billy looks at Ryan, grabs a crowbar, and and he wants just to end him because yeah, of his I, hatred. I was, I was... I was wondering about that. What you thought? If you thought that he meant to do something to Ryan with it that was crowbar. because at that point you didn't see Homelander. It wasn't he was looking directly at Ryan. He wasn't no, looking and, at and, Stormfront. And I, think I think you're right, but I, I don't think I don't think he would have. But I think he wanted to. Yeah, I I, I I I don't think he would have though. Me neither. And, and also, I wonder how Ryan would have reacted if Billy started approaching him with that with that crowbar yeah, i think his powers way. would came out yeah, at that point, yeah. You know? so you know so really homelander showing up there really is what snaps billy out of that because even homelander says well why would you want the kid that just killed your wife yeah you exactly know? he starts um, start utilizing manipulating as he usually does yeah which is yeah. so annoying but after homelander does show up billy takes ryan away from homelander because he promised becca right and then and that, Maeve, and then yeah. Maeve gets there with the with the recording with the threat just, of releasing the video yeah. so and, yeah yeah so we'll get into some more um let's see uh just gonna, we 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 both got a lot of notes here yeah we got some We'll just go back and forth. How about that? About sure. things that we haven't already talked about. My first one is just that whole conversation between Stormfront and Homelander. And they're talking about the fact that Black Noir is like in a coma or he's he's a vegetable from his encounter with Starlight and Maid in, <laughs> in the last episode. I thought that was a good that was a good way to just use uh, you know, kind of to um, segue and put him away. Yeah. In yeah. a certain way. To, yeah. To, to let us know, hey, that's what's going on with Black Noir. And just real quick, it's we didn't have to have a scene showing us yeah. That all we we have to all we get is that verbal recognition there. So yeah, the, because of his nut allergy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and mine would be the use of compound V because, uh, as you mentioned, who was it in the very beginning? Uh, it was uh, the oh, Secretary, the, the of, Secretary Defense. of Defense. Yeah, yeah, talking about using that for uh, compound V is being sold to, I guess, the military and police, but. 
it's like five million dollars a pop yeah for them yeah. and they're going to utilize it and even uh what's her name mallory states that if you do that or no it wasn't mallory but regardless they state that if they do that, you're going to have an influx of all these different suits yeah. and they don't even know what the hell they're doing. They don't know how to use their powers and they're just going to lash out like people. Yeah. Yeah. And and then at the end, when we're hearing the wrap up, we hear them say that compound that they have pulled that back, that that has been rescinded. now. Yes. That's in part of the wrap up at the end. Which so we know cool. that's that's not happening. So we don't have to worry about the world being overrun by by soups in the next uh, uh, the next one. Uh, my next one is we talked a little bit about it, um, but I just want to mention real quickly that the we got the return of a Billy Joel song. This time it was only the good die young that yeah. was uh, repeated. So we've already talked about the whole scene about Starlight and the car and stuff. Yeah, and to add to that, we actually got a Beach Boy song at the at very the end, end for yeah. the end season, yep. uh, and, and scene as as it were. Yeah, but uh, I forget the name of the song. God only knows. God only knows, yeah. and it was from yeah. Pet Sounds, and that's uh, it's a great song too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got the meeting with Maeve by Huey and Starlight to get Maeve to testify, and you could see how distraught she is. She's just broken from all that is going on, losing Elena. And all that is coming down with the soups. So she she just can't understand or comprehend. She's showing a human side of herself of of feeling and she just her attitude is fuck it all, you know. Yeah, yeah. She exactly. took a dose of fuck it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh so my next one is I did catch the the napkins fluttering uh when we have that scene between Stan Edgar and yeah. Alistair Adama, the, the the napkins kind of flutter, and then later in the in that scene we see A Train kind of walk out of the shadows. And so that was that moment when he was in the the mansion and he found the uh, what did what did Adana call it at the end? The private data research. I think, or something like that, which is yeah. just blackmail, blackmail <laughs> uh, stuff that he has on all the soups. And that's what he tells Victoria Newman at the end, you know, is, it, is that we have all this, this blackmail stuff that I can give you for these soups that'll, that'll really hurt Stan Edgar. And I think I finally kind of put it together now how she's being used by Stan Edgar is, is, is it's more to protect him, but mm -hmm. kind of like from the other side kind of. Thing. Exactly. It's more of like a uh, business <laughs> proposal to him more than anything yeah i i i I'll, i love i hope in the next season they show us some kind of interaction between the two of them uh so we can see what the what it is between them if it's if it is business if it is something else if you know uh, I'd, I'd love to see how what the inner workings of that are and yeah. and again i'm still confused not confused but i'm still i want to know how she killed Rainer because we know that that she's the one that that killed Rainer in that first episode but where was she at how did she know Rainer was meeting you know I don't think we have a clear picture of that so yeah well my last one would be uh Stormfront pointing out Ashley pulling her hair out yeah <laughs> we see that bald <laughs> spot finally from her pulling so much yeah and, and that behind shot so Ashley was watching Ryan at that time that whole time in the Vought building. And yeah. I have a cool uh, quote regarding that, which is pretty funny when we get to quotes. The last couple that I've got here that we haven't already discussed is uh, just that that moment with Frenchie and Mother's Milk finally meeting uh, Rebecca. Because mm -hmm. it looked like they had never met her before, right? Because they put the team together before or after Billy thought she was she was dead. So, mm -hmm. so that was cool. Uh, I thought it was, it was funny. You see the smiles on Frenchie and Kamiko's face when, when Butcher and Rebecca, when they kind of, when they kiss there in, in the basement and Butcher's just like, God, you know, cause he, he doesn't want to show any kind of weakness or anything. Well, also and how everybody was like fawning around them, to, uh, around yeah. her too. Even Huey is like, he's like, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan right. uh, of Becca. And then everybody else is like, uh, and then even Mother's Milk states it. He goes, not many people get close to Billy and you're the big one. And she goes, oh, yeah. you're close. And she goes, I've never heard of you. Now, yeah. mind you, it's like this is a different world for her because Billy's been in rap with these guys for years. And right. he thought Becca was dead. But yet, you know, they're all like. Yeah, they've heard about fixated. her, but she doesn't know any. She doesn't know anything about them because she yeah. wouldn't. How could she? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. It's a few more things that we haven't talked about from the wrap up in that little press conference. Homelander says that Stormfront is being held in an undisclosed location. He reveals that Starlight was wrongfully accused. And now they've got her, Maeve, and A-Train back in the seven, uh, but <laughs> obviously not the deep. 
Um, we've got uh, Huey saying that even though he's he's not going to be with the boys anymore, he is going to still cling to Starlight. I thought that was that was uh, kind of cool. Yeah. Ryan goes off in that CIA SUV, and uh, Mallory letting us know that all the charges have been dropped against Butcher and the boys. Mm-hmm. Um, we and we get that whole montage too. At yeah, the that's end. what. Yeah, uh, Frenchie. We this. That's what I'm going through. This is all the notes that I have yeah. from that little montage. We see Frenchie and Kamiko go off together to have their dance party. We see Homelander doing whatever he wants. I, I can do whatever I want. I can do whatever I want. Um, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. And then we have Huey joining up there with Victoria Newman. So that we'll find out more about that probably in the next the next season. So I think that was everything. Oh, we do see Mother's Milk. I didn't say that he goes back to his we see him get back to his family Mm -hmm. so that was really cool and of course we've already been talking about but just the huge reveal that victoria newman was the one who was doing the head popping so yeah yeah. some great stuff there yeah definitely and top of that what what did deep say to uh the head of the church about fresca fuck fresca yeah 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 (laughs) yeah yeah. and he said that his his uh, his new wife is terrible at blowjobs yeah Um, so (laughs) she's a she's weird and freak (laughs) yeah yeah so let's uh why don't you start we'll just go back and forth for our quotes all right i'll start with my first one which would be billy saying we're gonna shoot roadrunner right in the head (laughs) when annie and huey meet the boys in their secured location finding a way to take down a few of the soups. I thought that was funny. I like that. Uh, and I love that uh, Annie's mom says, the anxious boy, really? With the moist handshake that she's <laughs> yeah. talking about here. It's funny. Both her and Maeve have this weird reaction to when, they, when they meet Huey. And they're like, really, <laughs> him? You know? Yep. So uh, talk about punching above your weight there, uh, Huey. <laughs> yeah, well, to move on to more with Maeve about that, that's in her apartment when she goes, Maeve goes, He's even more of a twink than in the picture. I could split that shit like dry firewood. That's when Huey was trying to shake her hand when they meet her in her par- in her apartment. Yeah, yeah. And, was... and he goes, oh, a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, when when he when uh, Huey and Annie are talking about the Billy Joel thing before he reveals yeah. uh, his mom, he says, I'm 57 on the inside. Yeah, was... she said that. She pointed <laughs> yeah. out saying, what are you, 57? <laughs> I love that. He says, I'm 57 on the inside. I thought that was funny. Last one I would have would be Stormfront saying, hey, Ryan, I get it. I would feel lonely, too, if I was cooped up all day by myself in this West Elm Death Star. And that's after Ryan wanted to call his mom and Homelander getting frustrated because Ryan is still attached to Becca. Yeah, yeah. And I love the look that, that she that she gets from Ashley. Ashley is pulling out of here going, <laughs> he's not been alone. I've been here with him. You know, yeah, exactly. Kind of I think it's so, uh, like, uh, disregard <laughs> Ashley. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then in regards to Adana, when he was telling the Deep why he wouldn't, be able to get back into the seven then yeah after that whole conversation with stan edgar adonna says one hero is redemption two is weakness so yeah yeah very cool so no feedback this week okay but uh we do have some comic news okay so there is a comic out now called the COVID chronicles and this was a comic written and drawn by a comic artist that were in lockdown in the beginning of the pandemic that were falling on hard times so they utilized real stories from the pandemic to explain what people were going through within this particular graphic novel now mind you i think this was produced or set up by Alyssa milano I could be wrong, but I got that from the guy from the comic shop when he mentioned it the other day when I went to get my pool list, but I have not really gotten to read the comic itself. But the money that the comic receives actually does support those comic artists that are struggling still. So I I got wind of this when I stopped at the comic shop, and that's where I got that information that Alyssa Milano was tied to it in some way, and found out that Jerry Ordway himself ordered a copy, and both... Matt's or Matthews that own the shop ordered a few more copies, which I, you know, one of which I picked up and I I just suggest that to people to get it and support your artists that are, you know, that bring us this entertainment within comics. You know, it's it's a good way to help them because sometimes there, there is no pension or anything with these guys. They, they survive on what they do. They're Basically, I I like to call them heroes for hire because they give us our heroes. So I would suggest go out there, find the the COVID Chronicles. You'll probably find it on Amazon. You can probably find it in your local comic shops if they're open. So uh, do that and, you know, help out uh, an artist in need. 
And the last bit I would have, well, you know, <laughs> apparently there's an article out there called The Boys, the series proves Steve Rogers was right about one thing and Captain America Civil War. So apparently there's a correlation. Hold on. I, I read, I, I skimmed the article uh, when I saw the, the original posting of this. It basically is the whole thing about uh, whatever they call those accords in Civil yeah. War. Yeah, Sokovia. Yeah. yeah, the Segovia Accords, where they were trying to basically control superheroes from not letting them get out of hand. Yes. And so that's basically what the correlation that the article is drawing is the fact that we see these these heroes, these superheroes in the boys getting out of hand. And that that's what the article talks about is it it goes back and forth between the Sokovia Accords, the reason for them, and then some of the actions that, that were taken in the boys. So that's what it's all about. Which makes real sense. But I, I suggest everybody to go read it. Well, We'll uh, put that in the Facebook page when we drop this episode, so you'll you'll see a link in there, and I'll make note of it. Absolutely. So, uh, with podcast recommendations, Steve, what do you have? Well, uh, you know, over on Strange Indeed, which is a podcastica podcast, they've wrapped up the Great British Bake Off and the Haunting of Bly Manor. Next, I believe Rima and Paik are going to discuss the movie sequel to The Shining, Doctor Sleep, which is based on the book Doctor Sleep, which is a yes. sequel to the book the shining not the movie so i'm correct i'm not, I'm not sure uh i've seen the, it i've seen it, dr okay. sleep so I've, it, I've not read it's been years since i saw the shining so i may have to watch the shining again and then uh check out dr sleep they actually do utilize some of the stuff from the first movie okay so it's not like they're they're omitting the movie in any okay at all but okay. The the thing is, it, it's really more specific to the books and how they are. You got Ewan McGregor in there as uh, – I forget the name of the kid. Danny. Danny, yeah. yeah. So he's Danny as an older person dealing with his own demons, and then he deals with his journey, and there's – I I'm not going to give anything away, but there, there's yeah, some I, darkness I, that he encounters, and I, I highly recommend it. The, I never read the book, but I only watched the movie. For yeah. this particular one, I didn't read Doctor Sleep, but I do recommend the movie itself. It's an in interesting take, but you got to, uh, you know, just watch it from a different viewpoint. It's not The Shining. This is a different story, but is pretty much within the same realm of that particular movie. Well, it's a sequel, so it's... It, yeah, yeah. yeah I get but... it. And then the only other one I have is over on Run For Your Lives, which is a Pirate Core Entertainment podcast. Paik and Daphne uh, dropped their discussion of the 2020 movie Love and Monsters, which I watched and sent them some feedback. Uh, <laughs> I and, still watch uh, it. <laughs> it's really good. It's it's really... It's it's good. It's it's a little... There's... It's good. It's 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 good. Yeah, it's right. got Michael cool. Rooker in it, and uh, so it's it's got some good stuff there. Was the Marina Becker in it, too, or no? No, not no. I don't think so. I was thinking of something else then, but I did. I do have the movie. I haven't watched it yet. It's just like sitting there waiting. Yeah, <laughs> I'm cool. kind of busy these days. It's the holiday seasons. Everybody, yeah. I hope everybody's staying safe. The only one that I would have to give would be the Celebrity Spotlight with Ben Beck, and he is building up uh, quite a catalog of celebrities to interview in the coming months. So, and I look forward to that. So you can hear Ben Beck on the Next Level Podcast Network on the spotlight so i suggest checking that one out very cool so to submit feedback you can send you can hear us on any of your podcast player of choice there's plenty of them out there if you if you got a chance to give us a rating give us a five-star rating on there yeah you can check us out on our website which is panels to pixels podcast.com you can check out our facebook page as well which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels you can send us an email at panels to pixels one at gmail.com that's panels to pixels one the to spelled out right in the middle and mm -hmm. the number one at gmail.com you can call us uh and tell us about our car warranty or uh, just <laughs> get, leave us a message uh 845-350-2095 again that's 845-350-2095 Nine, five. We also have a YouTube page out there, which is just Panels to Pixels podcast. Next week, Mark, have you uh, have we got this set up, or we we need to do some? Uh... No, we could do this. We we need to coordinate, but uh, if I'm down for it, as long as uh, the other two are. <laughs> okay. The, currently, the the plan for next week or next time you hear our voices will be to discuss the movie Scott Pilgrim versus the World with hopefully a couple of uh, special guests. Uh, we'll probably do just a roundtable discussion like we've done before. Mm -hmm. about these these movies 
Definitely. So if, you, if you've watched Scott Pilgrim versus the world, if you're a fan, if you're not a fan, if you like it, if you don't like it, hey, uh, send us something and we will read it or play it. Exactly. And you could always just record your voice and put it on an email and send it to us and we'll get it and we'll play it. Absolutely. All right. So where else can listeners hear us? Well, I can be found right here on Panels of Pixels, as well as sending out audio feedback to my friends that do podcasts. And you can also hear me on a new podcast, or it's not so new anymore. So it's called Adrenaline Cinema Podcast in the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. The podcast is basically about those action-adventure movies, pure action films, suspense, thriller films, and anything that gets your blood going with adrenaline while you watch these films and with that panels to pixels will remain on the next level podcast network so stay tuned here and we will keep you up to date or just check out the pirate core entertainment website or go to the facebook page which would be facebook.com slash adrenaline cinema podcast very cool and i can be here right here of course on uh, panels to pixels i send voicemails to various other podcasts and currently i'm about to be a guest on adrenaline cinema podcast yep. uh, so hopefully you'll hear mark and i talking about the movie commando in uh, just a little bit yes exactly so these will probably released on the same day so check those out <laughs> so with that i just want to thank everybody for listening i'm mark and I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.